Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is June the 14th, 2021. Let's add some updated comments on Errol Spence's upcoming fight against Manny Pacquiao. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, the casino made a huge mistake, and we alerted you to that mistake in the earlier video I did on this fight. The casino opened this fight with Manny Pacquiao, a plus 350 underdog and higher. What I want people to do is to go back to that earlier video. Just Google Dwyer Spence Pacquiao. Go back to that earlier video and look in the comment section of that video. Right? You will see people in the comment section commenting on the odds they got for the fight. In that video, I told you that the plus 350 was a big mistake. That this was a very competitive fight. That the casino was giving away odds that were too good for the gambler. Well, since I made that video, the line has crashed, folks. Manny Pacquiao now is down around a plus 240, plus 230 underdog, right? Understand the drop from the plus 350 and higher down to the plus 240, plus 230 is something you could hedge without the fight even happening and make a profit. Well, let's talk about the fight. Certain things have happened. Errol Spence has now told us that he was only 80% when he fought Danny Garcia. Why? Because a lot of people are openly saying now, if the Errol Spence who fought Danny Garcia shows up to fight 40-something Manny Pacquiao, he could lose the match. Right? What I want to raise here is the idea that Errol Spence likely does lose the match. Right? Let me back up a bit here. Errol Spence exceeded my expectations and beat another fighter who I thought was going to beat him, Mikey Garcia. He did so behind a jab on his back foot for several rounds. He did win the fight convincingly. Let me applaud Errol Spence for that. Also, Spence is a legitimate champion, right? He beat Danny Garcia, who used to hold a belt. He beat Sean Porter, who used to hold a belt. Right? He beat Kel Brook, who used to own the belt. A guy who's out there beating champions, I tip my hat to. This video is not intended as a diss in any way, shape, or form to Errol Spence. But in my opinion, just based on styles, forget the hype. Just based on styles, based on Spence's admission, that his last fight, he wasn't himself. Right, think about that. When was the last fight that Errol Spence was himself? Don't you think he's going to need to be himself against Manny Pacquiao? For those keeping track, Danny Garcia goes the distance against him, doesn't he? Just like Sean Porter went the distance against Errol Spence. Just like the guy I picked, Mikey Garcia went the distance against Errol Spence. I want people to ponder this. Right? Manny Pacquiao, in my opinion, is going to be the puncher in this fight. Not Errol Spence. Right? I suspect Errol Spence, who is great at short range, is going to try to imitate Jeff Horn. Go back in Pacquiao's past. Jeff Horn is the one guy who was an aggressor against Manny Pacquiao, who roughed him up in the pocket, tossed him around. Now, we can argue over whether or not Jeff Horn actually won that fight. Teddy Atlas um, did that fight and thought it, the scoring was a farce. We can argue about whether it was a farce. But Manny Pacquiao got thrown around the pocket so much that Pacquiao actually had a falling out with Freddie Roach, his longtime trainer. Because Pacquiao felt 
that is corner, should have insisted that the referee enforce the rules and that Jeff Horn was really engaging in what? Wrestling more than boxing. Well, I agree with Manny. Um, if Errol Spence thinks he's going to be able to jump in the pocket and wrestle Manny Pacquiao, he's really going to be relying on an extremely lackadaisical ref. I believe that Jeff Horn, Manny Pacquiao fight, is an outlier. Let me add something else, too. If Errol Spence thinks he's going to be on his back foot, able to control Manny, Behind a jab, he's flat out kidding himself. It's very hard, especially for a taller fighter. Right? Someone who's taller than Timothy Bradley. It's very hard for a tall guy to control Manny Pacquiao with a jab because Pacquiao is a freak athlete, because Pacquiao moves his head too well. So, in my favorites folder are 11 minutes of a very important fight. Very important. I don't think we give the winner enough credit here. What he did is somewhat astonishing. Let me point out too, at the time the fight went off, we thought the fight was boring. People thought it was disappointing. People thought it lacked energy. Well, let me just tell you, Floyd Mayweather beats Manny Pacquiao, and Mayweather stunningly does so at mid-range. What I want people to do is to look at that film. Ask yourself, who is the aggressor? After the fight, Manny claimed he had a bad shoulder. When you look at the fight, you don't see a bad shoulder. You see Manny Pacquiao on his front foot. Mayweather wins that fight, not hiding behind a jab, not hiding at all, also not pursuing Manny Pacquiao. He wins that fight by outboxing Manny Pacquiao at mid-range. Folks, it's a jaw-dropper. Let me go one step further, and let me just say Mayweather, while he has success with the jab, he doesn't throw the jab that much. Rather, he is countering Manny Pacquiao. He also is controlling the pacing of the fight. Pacquiao is moving like this. Pacquiao's moving faster than Mayweather. Pacquiao's coming in trying to throw big punches on Mayweather. Mayweather had a gift of calmness. Mayweather's just calmly blocking shots. Mayweather sets up shop away from Manny Pacquiao's straight left. Pacquiao just can't land the punch. It's so bad, Pacquiao has to start trying to throw body punches on Floyd. Understand, too, that Floyd is shorter than Errol Spence. Right? Floyd and Manny are around the same height. Floyd's a little bit taller than Manny. But Floyd's able to just methodically outbox Manny Pacquiao and to control pacing to the point where the fight's not manic. It's not two guys throwing bombs, trying to knock the other guy out. It's not frenetic. It's not Manny Pacquiao opening up the war chest against Oscar De La Hoya. Right? No, this is different. Let me tell you how bizarre the fight is, and it's absolutely bizarre. You're going to notice Mayweather at times allow himself against Manny Pacquiao. Fast hands, heavy punches. As Antonio Margarito, in an interview I've posted, in my comment section here on YouTube says, Manny hit him six times for every punch he threw. Right? That Manny Pacquiao. Mayweather allows himself several times in the fight to get backed up into the corner with Manny Pacquiao in front of him. And Manny can't hit him. Manny can't hurt him. Worse yet, it takes a while to realize that Manny is exactly where counterpuncher Floyd Mayweather wants him to be. Right, folks? 
Let me ask an awfully dumb question here. Right? It's going to sound awfully dumb when Manny Pacquiao, even today, after the casino has dropped the odds, is going off at better than a 2-1 to one underdog. And that dumb question from the underdog side of the play is, is there anybody watching this video who thinks that Errol Spence is going to be able to fight like Floyd Mayweather against Manny Pacquiao? Right, folks, if he can't, in my opinion, he's going to lose this match. He's too slow for Manny Pacquiao. Look at the speed against Mayweather. You're going to see he's faster than Mayweather. But Mayweather's so brilliant defensively that Mayweather neutralizes the speed gap while staying at mid-range from Manny Pacquiao. Look at how Mayweather, think about it. Errol Spence is known for getting guys over to the side of the ropes and destroying them. Chris Algieri, right? But, you know, Spence is the kind of guy who survives when the guy is faster than him, Kel Brook, and then slowly starts landing big shots and getting the guy over to the side of the ropes. Understand Mayweather is a guy who is just dominating you in the middle of the ring. Right, Mayweather's comfortable in the middle of the ring. Now, if you want to bully Mayweather over to the side of the ropes, Mayweather's the kind of guy who'll say, okay, look, you want to be a bully? I'll back up over here in the corner. You're going to eat my counters. Folks, Mayweather, <laughs> Mayweather's not even insisting on leading the exchanges, which you know Errol Spence is going to. Let me ask another dumb question. Errol Spence's toughest fights ever, right, ever. Is Sean Porter in the top three? Shorter guy, like Pacquiao, more energy than Errol Spence. Like Pacquiao, is going to challenge Errol Spence for supremacy and control of the pocket. Right? You know, Manny Pacquiao isn't coming to fight Errol Spence on his back foot. You know Pacquiao feels he's faster than Errol Spence, hits harder than Errol Spence. And you know Pacquiao's going to want to come forward and hurt Errol Spence. Right? You also know Pacquiao's fought bigger guys before. Antonio Margarito, by the way, in a weight class up from Errol Spence. Right? You understand, too, that one of the big advantages Manny's had is that he's too fast for bigger opponents. Right, bigger opponents just don't have the coordination. They just don't have the where the wherewithal to deal with Manny Pacquiao. Understand too, Pacquiao's a guy who for a 147-pound fight, sometimes he'll come in weighing 144, no weight restriction. 145, no weight restriction. Right? It's because the 147's big for him. So, given that he landed, according to Margarito, six punches to every punch Margarito landed, right? Given that Manny was throwing hard punches to the point where he banged up Margarito's eye, right? Given that Manny is there to hurt you, shouldn't that Sean Porter fight? Which happened back when Spence was 100%, not 80%, like now. Shouldn't that Sean Porter fight tell us that an energetic, shorter guy who's insistent on coming in might not only be able to take control of the pocket, but might fight Spence in such a way that I would argue there is at least 40% of you out there, at least, who believe Sean Porter won that fight. So to the Errol Spence crowd, to those of you who feel that Errol Spence should be 
the big favorite he is in the fight, even now, after the line's collapsed. By the way, I expect the line to continue to collapse because other people are going to look at that Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao film. They're going to say, man, Floyd was masterful at mid-range. Then they're going to think to themselves, well, wait a moment. Didn't I see Cal Brook win the early rounds at mid-range over Errol Spence? Spence is not thinking he's going to control Manny with a jab like he did Mikey Garcia. Didn't I see Sean Porter in the pocket giving Spence a lot of problems? Folks, the question shouldn't just be, is this line the right line? No, the question should be, is Spence even going to win this fight? To the Spence crowd, tell us in the comment section of this video how the fight is going to play out. You know, understand, the guys who Manny has problems with are these real clever counterpuncher type guys, right? Marquez, where Manny runs in. Manny's on his front foot. Again, Manny's not trying to hide. Manny's on his front foot coming in. And Marquez has the counter right hand ready. By the way, not the first fight, not the second fight, not the third fight. It took Marquez a few fights. Folks, that's fight number four, isn't it? Where Marquez knocks Manny Pacquiao out. Manny's the kind of guy who some components are gonna be some opponents are gonna be confused early in fights. What round was it that Keith Thurman started to have success against Manny Pacquiao? Wasn't that several rounds into the fight? Several. Right? You know a casino would be making a mistake giving you a plus 200 and higher rods for Manny Pacquiao against Keith Thurman if the rematch happened today. How could they offer those odds for Errol Spence when Danny Garcia just went the distance with Errol Spence? Let me also say too, you know, size. I've heard from many people here, many, that Errol Spence walks around significantly heavy than 147 pounds. Right, folks, let me ask a real dumb question here. Is that a good thing? When you're fighting a guy as fast as Manny Pacquiao? Right, for those of you who are going to say, hey, Manny's too old. Okay, just answer this question. When is the last fight that you saw Manny Pacquiao in where he had less than far above average hand speed? Where's the fight where you were watching Manny Pacquiao and you thought to yourself, man, Manny's hand speed looks slow? Folks, when is that fight? If it doesn't exist, I don't want to hear about Manny's age. Either Manny still has exceptional hand speed or he doesn't. If he has exceptional hand speed, he's going to have a distinct hand speed advantage on Errol Spence. Right? And so look, 